Yay! No comments. No, no, it just it just starts. Try not to pay too much attention to the comments. I mean, you can glance at them, but it it, it, right. it gets really distracting if you're not right. used to it. Um. <laughs> Why? I'm saying you can be like this. Yeah. yeah. Well, that and when you start reading them, if you're not like super quick, it, they'll just like, and you'll be like, oh, and then that's why you'll see me get up and work the mouse because we haven't figured out how to uh, slow them down. No, no, just move the mouse over here and make a little trackpad right here so that we can control them. You, you get a wireless mouse? Yeah, I can't do that. I gotta make a corded one. I just gotta hook up a longer. What's up, Johnny? How's it going? <sighs> I just need to like extend the cord over here and then make like an ABS yeah. and then just, just do this. A mouse pedestal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, what's up everyone? How's everybody doing tonight? Hey from Norway. Ooh, that reminds me. Would you like a box? No. You sure? Yeah, I'm good. This is from a, a viewer. Uh, we worked out in his car yesterday. He brought us some Voss water. I started drinking that. I'm going to be in the bathroom. Ah, yeah. Axel from <laughs> Norway brought us the Voss. Oh. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, hey guys, checking in from Dallas. What's going Did on? Did you turn the compressor on? I just turned off the compressor. There you go. Ah, uh, hey from Shelby Township. All right, cool. Well, hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in tonight on our special Tuesday edition of yeah. Car Audio Talk with me and him. Today, why did the alien commit suicide? Uh, this is going to be the final show of the alien. So we, we put a little bit of air in him, we blew him back up because he's been looking really pitiful over there in the corner. We wanted to have him on for one more show, and it gets to be yours, Ernie. Well, he says compressor. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, cool. Because we we forget to turn it off sometimes, so they they are they remind us. They're a great audience. Yeah. So. Hey, um, Mel. Hey, Mel. What's going on? Mel is Mel. your phantom yeah, out of Texas. Mel. I know Mel well. You know Mel well. <laughs> Mel well. Hey, from Tulsa. So, anyways, our guest tonight is Mr. Ernie Hartman. Yep. How's everybody doing with that? I don't know why I said that. It was totally weird. What's up, Lewis? So, Ernie. You work for Amp Global. Yes, I sure do. And you're head of the tech support department. I am. Is that the pro is that how I should say it? Oh, my technical term or the appropriate term is technical services manager. Okay, so that I works. I see okay. the tech support uh, in Florida and California, and I'm head of the engineering techs based out of Florida. Okay, so let's back the train up a little <clears throat> bit and let's start from the beginning. So, not that far back, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a cold day. Yeah. Uh, 1978. <laughs> What's up from Maryland? Oh, Portugal. What's going What's on? What's up, man? Oh, of course. Louis. 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 He's one of my customers, aren't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah out of Portugal. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you know. Um, yeah. yeah. So, how did you get started in this wonderful field we like to call car audio? Well, I mean, I started doing it for my friends, installing stereos in like '93. 93, okay. Wow. And then the first time I ever tried to install anything was in my buddy's 84 Blazer. He had oh. a CD player out of a Honda Accord. Oh, like, really? An ABC already been chewed radio? Yeah, it was bad. Okay. <laughs> wow. I almost got it to work. There's beef jerky. Beef jerky. What's up, yeah. John? What's up, John? Uh, shouldn't he put his in What's that? What's Christian? No, I shouldn't. Um, <laughs> so, when did you start working at an act? What was the first store you actually worked for? Griffin Stereo in Griffin, Georgia, 1995. Okay. okay. Yeah. I uh, started working there. I worked there for about six years, and then I moved to Fort Pierce, Florida, and I worked at Installation Station from 02 to 06, and then I got my job at uh, Amp. It was Amp of America then. Yes. And I started January 2nd, 2007. Hello from snowy Ontario. I actually did a also did a brief stint at Mr. T's in Dayton, Ohio in like 05. But you were in Ohio? Yeah. Like well, how long? like brief like, like 90, six months. Like oh, six really? months, I was gonna say. And you're like, this ain't working. Yeah, I had like three foot of snow on the ground for six weeks. I was like, <laughs> nope, that's so, not my thing. When you when you started in Georgia, were you an installer or a sales guy? Both. Actually. Okay. Yeah, at the store in Georgia, you got to see the customer through from the time they walked into the door, you sell them the system, and then you, and had, to go put it you in. had to go install it, and then show them how to work it, so from the minute okay. they came through the door to the minute they left. You so how it. many installers did they have there? Um, one, two, three, three. And so is that how all three of them would work? Yeah. Really? So you guys would basically just be like... Yeah, whoever was free would catch the customers and... Deal okay. with them and, the job. 
Okay. Yep. And then when you were working on a car, you wouldn't stop to help someone else, or it so depends. If everybody was working on a car, then yeah, I was usually the one who got yelled at to come help the customers. <laughs> 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 Sounds familiar, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't worry, Johnny. You're gonna get one later this week. It, uh, it just it's been it's been busy. Um, so was there actually a dedicated sales guy? No. So there's no dedicated sales guy. So was one of the was the owner also an installer? No. Okay, so, oh, so he, oh, okay, he, so he was, wasn't he even was, a sales guy. Yeah, he was, but he, you know, he, he was the cashier. Okay, I take the money. Yeah, pretty that's much. It. Okay, I can understand that. You know, okay. Special right. situations. I don't know if he's watching. His name's David Ezra. He's he opened the place in like I want to say about '86. Okay. And he started selling TVs, typewriters, and telephones. Wow. And he okay, that was the three T's. Okay. Right, and then he changed over to car audio in like the early '90s. Yeah, that was wow. the same with us. Um, when I worked at ABE, he started actually selling um, the the satellite receivers that would go in your you know the big dishes. That oh, went in back your when the dish was like yeah, the size yeah. of the so room. It started ABE standing for Audio Video Emporium. Well. It just yeah, so he would put those in, and then he transitioned from home audio to car audio because there was, you know, back right. in the 80s, that was like the thing so to do, laser I guess. disc players or something? No, hey, it was Jeffrey. before then. It was real to real, dude. He sold real to real to Scientologists like it was nobody's business. Wow. Like, they would order like 50 at a time. Hmm, I wonder why. Anyways, so... He said, what part of Georgia? Griffin. Griffin. It's about 30 miles south of Atlanta. Well, I mean, it's part of Atlanta now, but, you know, back then it was about 30 miles south. What's yeah. that from North Carolina? So, yeah, that was Griffith Stereo. Okay. Um, now, why did you move? Okay, I know why you moved to Florida. So, you moved to Florida. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, I moved to Florida in like 02 because my parents moved to uh, Fort Pierce. Okay. And so, I just kind of followed suit. All right. Mm -hmm. And then, is that where you met? Did Tony work with you then? He did, actually. That is where I met Tony Tosillo. Um, me and him worked together at installation station for a guy named Jim Hoover. Uh, he was the owner and I don't know if Frank's watching. I know he's my Facebook friend so he uh, <laughs> might have caught my little adver advertisement earlier but uh, you know there it was a little bit different than Griffith Stereo. They did have dedicated salesmen and dedicated installers and there the owner was an installer as well as a salesman. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then Frank and Tom were our two salesmen up front and then we went through a lot of installers there, but the ones that stick out the most are me, Tony, Robert Rogers, and um, Keith, Keith Sexton. So. Hi from Michigan. <laughs> Good guess. Um, <laughs> so during all this, you had a car. Yeah. You did have a stereo. I have, had lots of cars. All right, so let's let's talk about some car. <laughs> so as an installer, you know, we, we typically like to put some really crazy stuff on our cars when we have the time. We never finish them, but we typically have a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> so what was your first car that really stuck out? Not necessarily your first stereo, but the one where you were like, ha ha, yeah. Uh, it's probably my truck now. Okay, let's go back a little further. <laughs> um, <laughs> back when you were broke and you were like, oh man. <laughs> I mean, really, man, for a long time, I had so many cars that I couldn't really ever put a stereo. Like, my first car was an 87 Cavalier. Right. So hey. I had two kicker. <laughs> you can relate to that. <laughs> I had uh, two kicker 10s on a Majestic 300. Wow. Two Pioneer six and a halves on a Majestic 80 and a Kenwood shaft model tape deck. By the time I got done with that car, the radio harness was like that long. I'm guessing. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. What's up, Scott? Wow. Um, he says, who owns the shop you're at now? I'm not at a shop. No, I'm, no, I work for it's Amp Global. Amp. It's uh, owned by a corporation. Yeah. An investment yeah. corporation, so it's not any one person. Um, let's talk about the truck you have now then. So you have a Dodge Ram. Yeah. What year? 14. 14. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a factory radio on there. I do, because it's the 8 inch screen. Yeah. Yeah, it's the 8 inch screen and it works just fine. You so. using an Amp Pro? I do actually. I have an AP4 CH41 and a BCI CH41 and a VS41, a couple ABS21, a DVR50 from Echo Master. Is like that six the, is cameras? That, is that the? Do you see how he sells the whole thing? <laughs> so that's. I'm just. I just use it, man. I that's use our, awesome. I that's use awesome. our stuff because I believe in it, and most of the time I get. 
I get picked to beta test it, so you know what? Let's talk about the beta testing for a little bit. So let's fast forward now to you're working at AMP. AMP hires you, yep. and what was your first job at AMP? I was a tech support representative then. So that meant you answered the phone. I did. I answered the phones and emails. I did that from January of 07 to about mid-08. Okay, oh, almost a year. What's up, Mike? About a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. Um, hey, Mike. Chevy Caprice. I've worked on lots of those. <laughs> yeah. So what was your first car, they were asking? 87 Chevy Cavalier was my first that car. That was your first yeah, car. That was Mine was a 1980 car. Dodge Omni. Nice. Followed you know, up by funny story. Yes. The first system I ever saw in a car was in that. And a Dodge Omni. And it had two Eminem Godfather 18s on oh, an Orion crap. Beast. In an Omni. And that was my first interaction with any type of significant bass. And when I heard that, I was like, this is for me. Mine was a uh, uh, dot, uh, Toyota, like an 80 or 78 Toyota Corolla that had a Hyphonics. Uh, Zeus, not a Zeus, Hercules, Hyphonix Hercules, mm -hmm. with two pile uh, raw drivers. Okay, <laughs> and it just exploded and just was crazy. And I was like, I'm so Pablo, um, Donald, passive induction. Yeah, it was it was bad. Um, so you answer. Nobody's behind. Us. It, yeah, you answer yeah. tech support. Yep. And uh -huh. then you get tagged to. So when when I first started at AMP. Um, I made it quite clear that I did not want to be stuck in the tech support department. Yes. That I wanted to be into what they call then research and development, but now it's engineering. Um, so the guy who hired me, Alberto, was said, if you promise me a year in tech support, then I'll grant your wish. And sure enough, I'm one of the last few. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm one of the last few who got hired in under that I call regimes because we've had quite a few regime changes at AMP. But I was one of the last few that got hired in under that regime who actually got promoted, you know, on into the company. So in like mid 08, I got promoted into R and D, and I did that from 08 until this year. So 10 years. Really, you were 10 years wow. in there. 10 years R and D. It changed from R and D to engineering around about 2012. So let's talk about let's talk about those ten years for a couple minutes because those ten years, um, a lot of products you got to play with and help develop. Yes. So let's let's go over some of the cool ones. So let's go. What were some of the first ones that you worked on? The gateway. The automotive oh, wow. media gateway. That thing was my life for a solid three years. And it doesn't even exist anymore. It does. We actually <laughs> still sell that. Best Buy still sells it. And we still get hammered daily about it through the tech support Really? Line. Really? Wow. And when I say hammered, I don't mean because of problems. Right, There's right, people right. trying to figure out how to use it. Yeah. And if it yeah. works well, on I mean, the car. Well, I mean, we put the gateway, in, we put the gateway in his car. Mm -hmm. The Nissan gateway. That's how we got the Oxen. Yeah. It, it is yeah. one of the most... Truly universal products. From Trina Dog, what's going that on? I know of. Yeah. I mean, that thing works across spans of years and huh. makes and models that even OEM stuff doesn't so do. So, for those of you that don't know what the Gateway piece is, do you want to have a crack at it? Yeah, Real general. It's not I mean, it was it was created in the iPod era before yes. the iPhone, and the iPod was the big thing, and everybody wanted to integrate the iPod and AUX into their cars. So. Yeah. We found a way to sabotage the, and when I say we, I don't mean me, yeah, I yeah, mean the engineers. engineers at AMP, found a way to sabotage the satellite radio line going into factory systems, and we interrupted it with the gateway and hijacked that way in, and we gave you iPod in and aux in with the gateway, and then that evolved into the Connect, so the iSimple Connect, which took it a step further, it did iPod, aux, Bluetooth, and satellite radio. Right. And then uh, that then evolved into the Car Connect, which by then the iPod was gone, you know, gone, gone yeah. and it was all about the phones then. So the Car Connect just does Bluetooth. So from the Gateway to the Connect to the Car Connect, that was from like 08 to about 13 or 14, 2013, 2014. Right. Okay. So we're looking at like six years of just now just not media in the house. Now one of the one of the things that when you guys are developing a product and you're testing it, you try to, you guys just don't say something works. No, no, absolutely not. If it's on our app guide, that means we've tested it. And this, I see this guy here says something about Elite. So understand that when I was in engineering, I worked for the pack division. Yeah. I had no dealings with, or pack and I simple. 
Yeah. I had no dealings with the What's audio up, brand or Stinger, like, you know, yes. Catalano. Yeah, and, yeah, it's simple. You know, he handled all that. And we dealt only with integration. So if it, if it integrated into a vehicle's data bus, that was So us. just to keep in mind, like, some of these people think <laughs> that because you work for AMP, you work for, and you, you play with everything. Yeah, like no. and it's not how it works. No, you know, there's you different. You guys have their own department. Yeah, there's different factions. There's my wife. Hi, babe. <laughs> <laughs> there's a uh, there's different factions, if you will, of, uh, of AMP. It's just the brand, you know. So like right now, you have the Echo Master line, the I Simple line, the Phoenix Gold line, the Stinger line, the Pack. And I say yeah, it's five. We have five power brands, is what they call them now. So. You know, and each one of those factions has their own team of, you know, engineers and, and engineering techs and, and what have you. But the pack brand is so heavily integrated into cars that yes. it requires the most attention. resources and attention, if yeah. you will, on, on the part of the engineers and the engineering techs. So, so are you a Bye, sci-fi Liz, Thank you. <laughs> Hey, what's that got to do with anything? Uh, no, no, just a description of uh, yeah, Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> right. Um, Different so, divisions. So, after, we, okay, so Gateway took up a lot of your time, mm -hmm. and then we're moving forward into, and there again, <laughs> everything has to be tested, everything has to work, mm -hmm. you know, you guys spend tons of time hanging out at uh, car dealerships. Yes, I spent through. 10 years at car dealerships with Mr. Gary Mazur. He is one of our uh, uh, senior software engineers for the integration divisions. And you asked about the coolest products. By far, my favorite is the BCI CH41. All right, so the BC, okay. okay, so that is the integration into the Dodge. So tell what is the BCI yeah, So the BCI CH41, the BCI stands for backup camera interface, and the CH is Chrysler 41. So four is the uh, generation of data system in the car and okay. one is the generation of the product. So what the BCI CH41 does, it allows you to add a reverse camera to, uh, you know, these Chrysler Dodge Ram Jeep vehicles that don't have a reverse camera. And it also allows you to do all kind of other stuff like nav unlock and steering control swap and remote start climate restore and man, there's so many I can't even think of them. And the funny story about that part is it was born out of sheer boredom. Really? Yeah. I was bored. <laughs> so let's see, back in like 2015 when we had a regime change, like the new CEO came in and kind of kicked the anthill and everything went up and yeah. into the air and me and Gary were kind of left to do our own thing for a little while. So we went to Chrysler and made the BCI CH41. And uh, you know, it's probably one of the biggest seller products we have now. We use them. Yep. Yeah, we have yeah. a great video. <laughs> that's, honestly, that's another reason why I'm not replacing the radio on my trucks. Because right. I'll lose my BCI CH41. <laughs> so Bismore, so. what's going on, man? So, you've also worked on the CP2 steering wheel control. Yes, the CP2, the CP5. CES 2014, I stood in front of a control pro display for a week straight and talked about that thing. And that would be why you don't want to go back there anymore. <laughs> I don't like Vegas anyway. Um, <laughs> and then you worked, uh, you helped validate on the AMP Pro? Yes, the AMP Pro was, uh, it was another one of the products that I was pretty heavily involved in, again with the testing and validation, and incidentally I also write all the instruction manuals, well did, for pretty much any pack or ice simple product made from 08 to 2017. Okay. Oh, look at your wife throwing you a softball. What's on the horizon? <laughs> <laughs> That's a G14 class five. Exactly. <laughs> um, worked on the F150 kit. Yeah, so that is something I can talk about. The, we are making a new F150 kit that works on the eight inch. Oh, as far as what the, all it, has the valve been lifted? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I, I was sworn to secrecy, so. I mean, we're working on it. I can't tell you what all it does. Yeah, as you say, my 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 mine came with don't talk to anybody about this. I'm like, bro. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Come on, really? Yeah. All I can say is we're making it. Yeah, yeah, and it's gonna be it's, fun. It's gonna have some. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Added features as compared to the current kit that only works on the four inch. Yeah. Okay. So for all the eight inch guys out there that just been waiting patiently for mm -hmm. that. And of course coming other, soon. Yeah, coming just soon. Just keep waiting. Well okay, so let's you know 
let's talk about something that I know you can help uh, bring some light on. So we're, we're back to the AMP Pro for a second. So the conceptual idea of the AMP Pro happened years ago. Yeah, we actually had a, a predecessor to the AMP Pro. It was called the C2A CHY. Yes. That thing come out in like 08? Yeah. 07? Yep. And that and, was the Chrysler one. Yeah, it was. And Chrysler was the only one that we made. And for years when I went to the shows, people would come to me and be like, man, you guys need to make C2As for Everybody. Ford and GM and, and all these other things. And like I would always bring that back from the show. And then finally one day they started listening to me. <laughs> Trust me, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying there. I'm the only one oh, who yeah. had the idea. Everybody wanted to see it done, yeah. but you know, with all the goings on within the company, and you know, so, it's a little bit easier said than done. Uh, you know, no doubt. <laughs> so, from conception, meaning like the idea gets put on the, the whiteboard, and and it's like, hey, we're gonna do this, mm -hmm. and then they develop it, and then it gets into your hands. Mm -hmm. So, your once it's in your hands, this is well past. Uh, yeah, there's many stages of the design process, if you will, for these products. So it all starts with the hardware engineer who, um, you know, he actually designs the board and lays it out in the software they use to do all that. And then it's sent off to the vendor who makes the boards and then we get samples and we got to make sure those work. And then we make any changes or tweaks if they mess anything up, we send mm -hmm. it back. They then send us more samples. We then take those samples and that's when we go out to the dealership or rent a vehicle or whatever and we start the, it. that's when the software engineers start their development they got to start writing the code and then we start plugging and chugging is what we call it through vehicles <laughs> <laughs> to uh you know to hit them all and and it's much easier to develop products for new vehicles because when you go to the dealership there's like 30 of the same truck there that yeah. just have different trim levels so we can hit all of those and and make sure all the options work. So then we, like I said, we call it plugging and chugging, and then, uh... <laughs> Mail. <laughs> During my Thanksgiving prayer, the Amp Pro was in the... <laughs> um, For the Ford, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So we start, we start plugging and chugging, and we go through all the vehicles, and at that point, that's when we start what we call validation. And validation is where you actually start running through your checklist of all the features, and if they work, and then we got to hit the reset button, start all the way over back at the beginning, and we start hitting all the vehicles again. And if at any point during validation we find a problem and code has to be changed, boom, reset, back to the beginning again. And we got to start and run through all the vehicles again. So the reason why I bring this up is because... People think it's easy to make something. People think it's easy to make something, <laughs> and, and everyone is complaining about, you know, uh, when, 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 when. Like, you know, uh, obviously no, you've heard yeah. it a dozen times on the B&O system. Yes. Um, yeah, that's probably a daily call, get logged in. Hey, how come this doesn't work? And it's like, um, why? You, so, so to expand on that, why that doesn't yes. work is because the B&O system, that is another type of digital audio. So you have the, the basic Amp Pro, if it, you can call it basic for, you know, like a CH41 or an FD21, that type of system has two channels of fixed audio going to the factory amp. And when you roll the knob, the volume knob on the radio, it doesn't change that output. Yeah. It changes the output of the amplifier. Mm -hmm. So if you try to tie into those two um, channels of audio, it's just going to be at zero dB, full tilt. Right. All the time. So those are a little bit easier because it's still analog audio but right. then when you get into like gm that's a most system right which so, we had all the engineers talking about exactly. that exactly mm -hmm. so when they were here talking about all that that was a big deal because that takes a little bit longer to design because that's pure digital right and then also you gotta like pay into the most conglomerate and, and oh, yeah. deal with all that stuff but that is a brand new piece of hardware Right. So like the FD21, the CH41, the CH21, all those are relatively the same piece of hardware with different firmware, but then when you get to the GM, boom, brand, brand new piece of hardware. Yeah, so in order like to, said, you had to they had to buy permission to work on the most. Exactly, so. because that's most, but then when you start getting the B&O system, that's what they call A to B digital yes. audio, which guess what? That requires a third piece of hardware. Yes. So, you know, it's, it's just all... Which there again, you have to be validated in order to work on it. So you had to buy the tools in order to even well, start working on it. Well, I don't think, and I, I could be wrong, but I don't think there's really a type of any type of conglomerate for like A to B. It's no, just a it's different type of protocol. Right. So, but yeah, you do have to buy, you know, dev boards and dev tools and all the stuff to, because also understand for everything that we make, that's everything that we make, like once we get 
everything validated, right? So, so back to the whole process. Once we get everything validated and we're like, all right, cool. Here's the software we're going to use. Here's the hardware we're going to use. Then we have to make a tester. Yeah. And it's like this little tester jig that you plug the board in, clamp it down and hit the button and it runs through its whole little tester process. So we've got another engineer who just does that. <laughs> so like you gotta, like there's so many things at play here when it comes to these integration pieces that it's yeah. not as easy as like, you know what? We're going to make that. And then five days later, we got a product. Like it's, and then the, no, now, that's not how it works. The, the other thing too is that is like you have development, you have when you get to finally test it, you're going back and forth with testing it. Mm -hmm. When your product ships, it ships as a functioning master copy. Oh, absolutely. You know, and it's not, and that's why, you know, when people ask us, like, why, why we use so much pack? It's like, because it's going to work. Right, and that's what you were asking earlier. Like, we, we don't just list vehicles because we think they're going to work or because it looks the same. Mm -hmm. Like, right. we have either personally been in the vehicle or we have, you know, a special level of dealer like yourself who yeah. has actually tested one and ran it through one of our validation sheets. You know, to make sure that it works because we get reports all the time. Hey, I plugged this into my, you know, 2019 Dodge Ram and it worked great. Well, did you check the reverse chimes, the forward chimes, the door chimes, the Bluetooth call, the nav prompts, the the radio beeps? Like, there's all kind of stuff that people don't think about when. <laughs> no, yeah, it just plugged in. Yeah, it just worked. Plugged it's in, I get audio. What's up, <laughs> playing? I'm good. So there again, like that A to B piece. The reason why it isn't out yet is because there's a whole process that has to be done in order mm -hmm. before that piece comes out. Just like the eight inch kit. You know, once you guys see the problem or see the future product, it's just not like, let's go buy a Ford F-150 with an eight inch screen no. and, and build this. There's no. a whole, like, you guys are too big to, to get it wrong. <clears throat> exactly. You know? And I mean, we try to employ very meticulous OCD people. I mean, right. you know, I myself and one, the guy I talked about earlier, Gary, the software engineer, he's right. like that. Our hardware engineer, who actually is now the director of engineering, Mike Lake, he's he's the same way. Like we all make sure that everything is, which does on slow point. down the process a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely, but you know what? It's like we always say: we might not be the first to market, but when we get to market, it works. Yeah, so, there you go. So yeah, so there. So that's what we use. That. Back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, so you gave that up? Yeah, actually, this year I was offered the. Head of the tech support department. You gave it up. Oh, no, I really gave it up. I'm supposed to be sort of a working manager, if you will. But again, <laughs> we had we had another regime change, and you know, it's it's definitely for the better. And you know, our new leadership is definitely allowing more things to happen and and more progress to be made. So, you know, I took over the tech support department with the end goal of integrating that into engineering. Right? Okay. Because the people in engineering are they're the ones that know how the products work. Yes. Right. right? So they sure. should be the people on the phone answering the questions. So ultimately, all of my tech support guys will evolve into engineering techs who answer the phone. Wow. That's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Well, you've already made some great strides into the tech support. So you've hired new people. Yep. More, you have more techs now answering oh, yeah. the phones. Yep. Um, you have more, uh, well, you tell me. Well, <laughs> so, well, I, mean, I was going to say, I'm repeating what you, know, you told I, me. I, I hired more people, and, you know, these are all <laughs> people that I've worked with, you know, around the Bay Area for mm -hmm. a long time. So I've had them handpicked for a long time, and I upgraded our tech support system. So it brought all of our channels into one. I implemented chat widgets on the, the websites and a self service center, and, you know, all kind of stuff. Now, can consumers call? Absolutely. And they'll get the same, mm -hmm. or better. <laughs> Just not on Saturday. Not on Saturday. Saturday. So Monday through Friday, what is the text, what is the, uh, what is the time that you guys are open Monday through Friday? 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Because you guys got guys over on California. Nope. In California, we have, uh, we have three techs in California, two that do the masses, if you will, and one who's a GM specialist because uh, we, um, we also sell the IntelliHaul kit to GM. Okay. So if you go to any GM dealership and buy a new Chevy truck and have it outfitted with the IntelliHaul system, that's us. Oh. So we have, and that's from our EchoMaster division, um, mm -hmm. and we have one guy named Dave who just answers those calls all day long. So. Way to go, Dave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Good for day. I got my resume <laughs> together. <laughs> hey, man. Um, so, what's, ah, uh, let me just, let me see. <laughs> what's next? Yeah, there we go. I don't know. Um, I mean, you know, I'm just evolving the tech support department and trying to integrate it into engineering and, you know. So, I know where I wanted to go with this. So, you're wearing a hat today. And you picked that hat on purpose, I'm sure. You know, I actually wear this hat whenever it gets cold, because it's cold out there right now. 59 yeah, and you, and degrees. And you folks. have thin hair on the top of your head like Oh, me. somebody say that was 60, 16 in <laughs> some, somewhere, yeah. All right, yeah. so let's talk about MECP for a minute. So what, the MECP what is program, MECP? So it stands for Mobile Electronic Certified Professional, right? Yeah. Yep. And um, funny story, so back to my first job at Griffith Stereo. Okay. The guy who trained me at Griffith Stereo, who taught me the basics of all this. Um, yeah, he talked about the alien needs some air. <laughs> this is the last show of the, the yeah. alien, Aaron. So um, the guy who trained me at Griffith Stereo, his name was Jody Marshall, he actually was all into the MECP okay. stuff at the time. And that was back when the advanced test was called the first class. Yeah. Or something like that. And, you know, it was a big deal to him. So it always, you know, inspired me to, to be like him, if you will, because this yeah, was the yeah, guy yeah. who trained yeah, yeah. me and, yeah. and taught me everything. And so I never really was able to do anything with it until I started working at AMP. So you didn't get MECP until you started working at AMP? Correct. Really? Yeah, I was in the industry for 13 years before I even started with the MECP stuff. And I became basic certified in 08. Okay. And then... Now, for those of you, it, it's there, there's three books. Four. There's four books now. Four books, wow. Um, three books for installers, one book for salesmen. Correct. Um, basic gives you, let's let's talk about the basics of, so, basic gives you a general knowledge yeah, of. Yeah, so, so basic is really a general knowledge of, you know, the theory of electronics, if you will, Ohm's right. law and, yeah, Ohm's law. <laughs> and, uh, you yeah, know, yeah, law. Needs help. And, um, <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, like the basics of alarms and remote starts and Bluetooth connectivity and, you know. So it gets you a good grounding if you're thinking about becoming or doing anything in karate, whether right. you want to be an installer or a sales guy. It, it, right. It gets you a good foundation. And, you know, I always hear, hear people say, oh, you know, I've hired people who are MECP certified and they don't know anything. Well, I mean, you know what? If you're fresh out of high school and you take an MECP test, that doesn't mean you're a good installer. No. My theory has always been that the MECP program makes a good installer a better installer yeah because you learn why things are the way they are and you know what Ohm's law doesn't lie so you know you can figure things out quite yeah. easily with with that and then right. you move into the advanced book and that's really more of uh, what I would say the everyday installers test you know that okay. gets into practices of taking apart cars and the proper ways to do mm -hmm. them and and the types of fasteners and screws and things like that. But it, it also expands on the Ohm's Law and Kirchhoff's Law and, and all that stuff as it, well. Any, anybody can take these. It, it's a book you buy. They sell it on Amazon. Mm, no. Anybody can take the basic test. Mm -hmm. And anybody can take the... So the fourth one we spoke of is the... The retailer. Yeah, but what's it called? The product specialist. Yeah. Okay. That's more for salesmen. So anybody can take the basic or the product specialist. For, okay. For advanced certified, you got to have a minimum three years in the industry, and it has to be signed off by really peer or your boss or oh, yeah, yeah. You right. know, somebody who is your supervisor. And then for the master test, um, you got to have five years and a current advanced certification. And you just okay. recertified for your yes. Poor thing. Yeah. So, so to continue the story on yes, that, continue like, the story. I, I started doing the MECP stuff in around about 08. So I got basic certified in 08. I got advanced certified in 09. And then I got my first master's certification <coughs> in 2010. Okay. And luckily at the time, Ron Freeman was the CEO of AMP and he also sat on the board of directors, if you will, for CEA, okay. which is the Consumer Electronics Association, which is now the CTA, Consumer Technology Association. And they own MECP. And they, yes, they own and oversee the whole MECP program. So when Ron found out that I was into all that, he was like, go do what you want. Take all the time you need and please really? learn as much as possible. Wow. So I did that 
That was cool. Yeah, man. Dean, did you take your MEC peak thing? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. It's on so, uh, chapter one of book one. So, you know what? I'll, I'll talk about that here in a minute. But uh, anyway, so once I acquired the master level, then that, I started also going to the shows then. So I'd go to Knowledge Fest every year and, and uh, CES yes. and Spring Break Nationals. And I started encountering other master level installers and Todd Ramsey, who was the chief writer and overseer of that program yeah and he was like hey man you want to start writing content for the books and i was like well yeah you know <laughs> why not so i've actually written content for the advanced guide the master guide what's up seth and the product specialist guide as well as write some of the test questions so yeah i've uh, been pretty heavily involved in mecp for quite a while nice and uh you know it's a uh, it's a great thing, you know. A lot of people knock it, but you know, why not? It's like my dad used to always say, "Once you learn something, I can't take it away from you." That's true. So why not? Mm -hmm. So, and that is actually a requirement now of all the tech support and engineering techs at AMP that they be at least basic or advanced certified. Really? Okay. Yep. Okay. So it proves they know how to read. Yeah. I mean, and really, that's it's kind of, and they have time. Well, I allow them time to do it. You know? And again, it helps them understand why, you know, like yes. why things work the way they work. And like, you know, how many watts an amp's going to put out? You've got 52 volts and four ohms. How many watts is that? Enough. Well, it's a lot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bust out some ohms law and you'll figure it out, you know. But I mean, it's good troubleshooting skills. That's what the master test, like there's no way you're talking, you keep talking about reading the book. So number one, that's not a good way to study for MECP. Right. You need to take the practice test in the back of the book. Right. See what you miss, go back and study that. If you try to read those books cover to cover, you're going to die of boredom. Okay? Uh, that's where I'm at. Yeah, yeah, it's like trying to read a textbook in high school. It's, yeah, it's killing me. So you recommend yeah. to start from the back? Well, well, well in the back, back of each chapter, there's a little practice test. Yeah. yeah. Take that test. See what you're good at, what you're not. Go back and study what you're not good at. Yeah, so okay. for me, I'm like going, all right, who wrote this for one? Because five chapters on a 300-page book is, is silly. Um, whoever, whoever decided that's the way they were going to do it should go back and maybe learn how to write. Um, well, you got to say, not one person wrote the whole book. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. that's apparent. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's apparent. Yeah. I, there's I, like I got a, at that. There's about, for the advanced and the master guide, I'd say there's anywhere from 15 to 20 contributors. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a nice list of them. Yeah, I mm -hmm. wasn't involved in the, the basic rewrite back in 2009. Yeah, that was before I was able to do that. But uh, and then on the product specialist guide, there was like ten of us because CEA went or went underwent a regime change as well, and they Jeez. all got tossed up in the air. And so, you know, there were very few of us left to to do that. So, yeah. I heard these guys are the best. No, I'm not answering the phone for anybody. Forget that. We've had that conversation. I've tried. No. Yeah. No. Hey, hey, what do you want? Really? Okay. Um, You'd be like, you did what? Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, like, like we still use the old phones, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I'll be, yeah, exactly. I'll be like, um, you know, we made a really cool video on that. <laughs> Just go check it out. Uh, I did my basic and master MECP, but did not renew it. So that's what I was going to say, though. So yes. the basic and advanced test, like, you could pretty much read the book, memorize it, and take those tests, right? Yes. But when it comes to the master test, no, no, that's a whole other animal. You have got to have some serious in-the-bay knowledge and hands-on experience to be able to pass that test. Right. Especially the new version. The new version was rewritten 2014. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Yeah. It's pretty tough. Dean doesn't like people. I love people. <laughs> I love people as much as he loves people. <laughs> Ooh, wow. <laughs> so, you have, you know, we, we talked about this at one point. You had goals, okay? And this is going to bring this back because a lot of the people that watch the show, um, they, they want to know how to get into this industry or they're in this industry and they're like, they're, they're, they're stuck or they want to try something new. You had, you, you, we had talked on a Saturday one day of the list of goals you put together. You had said, I want to do this. I want to do this. I don't want to do this. I mean, you know, when I first started in this, I didn't, What's really, that, have, Wayne? I didn't really have a list of goals. I just really, I just wanted to work at the stereo shop in my town, which was Griffin Stereo. Correct. Like that was my goal and everybody was like, oh, you gotta have a degree to work there. You gotta have a degree to work there. 
So I just went in there and started pestering them. Hey, you want to give me a job? Hey, you want to give me a job? Hey, I hooked up my buddy Stereo. You want to give me a job? And then <laughs> finally one day they're all like, yeah, you know what? Sure. Come on in. We'll give you a job. Okay. And that's how I started. So then when I started working there, I just was busy learning you know, the trade and as much and, as you could. Yeah, right? as much as I could and how to do everything and that's how from ninety five to about you know, oh five, oh four, oh five was just spent, you know, grinding in the bay, putting in work. <laughs> okay, real quick. Uh Dean is not afraid of big books. I, I've read some huge books. He can't read the book while he's running. But I can't read the book while I was running. I used to read while I was walking, but I don't. I don't walk yeah. anymore. But, um, but yeah. So no. I. I so yeah. So yeah. anyways. So fast forward to about '05. Yes. And when I was at installation station, our stinger rep would come around, you know, every month, and I was like, you know, I'm getting really burnt out on this whole bay thing. Like I'd like to work for a manufacturer. Yes. Like that would be cool. That would be my next level. And. Terrence Mariani, who was our stinger rep at the time for the East Coast of Florida, I started nagging him then. Hey man, can you give me a job at AMP? Can you give me a job at AMP? Can you give me a job at AMP? And then finally one day he's like, yeah, you know, I think they might have something open. I'll, I'll let you know when, uh, That's when, I, cool. when I come back around. Well, unfortunately, when I came back around, when he came back around, I wasn't there. That's when I had moved to Ohio briefly. And, oh. Uh, yeah, so then when I came back to Florida from Ohio, that was when I got my in at AMP through Tony. Right. And that's when I started in the tech support department. So then that was when I started my whole MECP goal. And, and you know, when I started there, I told my boss, I don't want to just be in tech support. I want to be, I want to tear apart the cars. I want yeah. to figure out how stuff works. Mm -hmm. and, and so that was my goal then. And then once I got that, it was the MECP. And then, you know, once I started at basic, I was like, I'm going to make master one day. Because at the time, there were only like 150. Yeah. You know, Master well, Shaughnessy's certified. the only one in Canada. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. He, no, I think there's two. I think his coworker Derek is one. Did he finally get uh, one? Because I know at Knowledge Fest there was just he was the only guy, or he was the first. Maybe. So. Either I, way, probably he was. Either the first. way, yeah. So then, um, apparently they don't know how to read books. And ironically, when I was in, actually the ten years I spent in engineering, I kept asking for the job of tech support manager. Again, like I'm, I'm good at nagging people. <laughs> you give me the job, give me the job, give me the job, give me the job, and then yeah. finally this year they were like, "Hey, you still want that job?" And I was like, "Yeah, absolutely." So, you know, I've gone from just wanting to work at the stereo shop in the town I grew up in to pretty much being an industry leader and writing the book on car audio, if you will. So let's talk about car audio for a few minutes. We'll bring this full circle. Are you an SQ or an SPL guy? You know, I've morphed over the years. At first, it was all about SPL. Well, it's always all about SPL. Yeah. Just, I mean, that's what got us started. loudest bass. Yes. But I will say that with our inception of the Amp Pro <coughs> product, it got me pretty heavily involved in DSPs. And one of my projects last year was to pretty much buy every DSP on the market, install it in my truck, figure out how it works. Okay. So uh, in doing that, that's what's got me now into the SQ, which uh, actually helped me on the new master test because... A lot of section three of the master that. guide written by Andy Waymeyer himself um, talks about all of that and that taught me a lot as well. So now I'm constantly focusing on the DSP in my truck and time alignment and you know crossover settings and, and on all that stuff. It's it's pretty fun, man. Yeah. It's great. I, I you see what we have sitting over there, that black box next to the boss. You mean the the kicker thing or the PE no, DSP? The, the, the thing you can't see that's oh. sitting next to the vice. Can you see the thing right, that you can't see? One. The black thing what sitting is it? next to the vice. Oh, is that that new audio oh, control? Yeah. 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 Can't thing. talk about it. It's a box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey Shane, um, the but show that yes. you're looking for, it's, yes, uh, it is. <laughs> it's, it's a stereo king. Stereo king, so you can check it out. So, I mean, in my truck now, I definitely have an SQ set up for my front stage, but I mean, I still got... What are you running for speakers in there? You don't have to be politically correct. We understand <laughs> because, listen, if Jeff Smith is running what he's running, you can so run whatever got, you want. I, I got a little bit of a mixture of everything. I, I got the Hertz High Energy. Okay. So I have a self-built three-way Hertz High Energy component set. What did you use to build it? I mean, I bought each 
components. Separately. Okay, so, so yeah. I bought the six and a half inch okay. swiffers. I bought the little three inch mid range from you guys. Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. two and a half. Yeah, yeah. Yep. is that what they are? Two two and, and, half. and yep. then the the tweeters, and then for my amplifiers, I have a Phoenix Gold SX2 1206 and a SX2 601, and I have those running on two Memphis tens actually. Is it active or passive? It's all active it's through all active. a Arc Audio PS8 DSP. So you sell yeah. it on the Arc? Yeah, yeah, I know it. It was just the last one in the chain of testing, so it right. just got and left in like, there. That's what I have. <laughs> yeah, it just got left in there. That's uh, funny. And I've already spent so much time messing with it that I'm not. You don't even want to screw it. I'm there. not. No, I'm, okay. I'm so deep in it. I'm not starting over. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you on that one. We had to just do a, a swap out from one brand to another for a, for a uh, rep because they stopped carrying the one brand and they wanted to put their other brand in. And he's like, we just got to swap these. Uh, All right. Mm. No. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure, we do. Like making a product, right? Just, just, just yeah, no, and by the way, there was a noise there. And uh, see if you can get rid of that noise. <laughs> the woofers I yeah. have are just because they were free, actually. Again, well, I got one from you guys and one from the shop I used to work at. I'm like, hey, these match. Nice. In the box they go. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. That, that box up there was Fernando's gift today. Ooh, that's top Christmas, one. man. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Can, can we talk about it? Yeah. Oh, what is dude, it? Focal what? K2s. It's the K2s, man. Oh, dude, those are the yellow cones? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, that's what the Donnie has in his truck. Yeah, those are yeah. the new ones. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Got those today from... Uh, Santa Claus came today. Uh, Santa Claus totally came today. Yeah. Um, but no, we... Uh, actually, that was a trade. That was a... Uh, I have to get him something and Fernando gets him something. Uh, hey, Dean, he said Memphis. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, I agree. SQ, SPL. But yeah, you know, we all started there. Um, and then, so... so okay, so ported or sealed? Ported. I have a Fox Acoustics box. Oh, you, you bought the Fox box? Oh, absolutely. Those things yeah. are awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah for fun. the Ram? Yeah. yeah, those are fun. For any one I've done. Yeah. I've done yeah, exactly. a Tundra, an F-150, yep. a Silverado. Correct. Like, they are awesome. Have we done yeah. a Silverado? Yeah, we done. Did we do yeah. the Silverado? Yeah. Okay. Like, I used no, we did. We did. That's right. We just did. Yeah. Just did I have been known to do a side job here and there. And, like, I used to build my own <laughs> boxes. But once I bought that Fox box for my car or my truck. Yeah. Not gonna change it. No, I know. I'm saying, like, for all the side jobs I do, they're like, "What about a box?" I'm like, "Go to Fox Acoustics and buy." buy yeah, box. they're yeah. nice. Yeah. Apparently, nope. you have two kids. Two kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's uh, got my wife, uh, daughter, and I have. Oh, that's Sebastian. right. Yeah, 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 she's two okay. kids. Yeah, I yeah. two kids. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know how that is. That's cute. I got five yeah. kids. <laughs> Well, there was three, and then it turned into five, but there was originally two, and then there was one, yeah. and then there was two more, and Long so there's, there's, there's five now. Five. Total. Five. That's it. Well, all right. You want to give her a shout out? Yeah, to all my kids. So the ones that live with me here in, in Florida is Micah, Matthew, and Jacob. I'm pretty sure they're watching me right now. Hey, guys. And then up in Georgia, I have two older kids, uh, Megan and Austin. I don't know if they're watching or not. No, but, so. you know. You tell her. You never know. Out. Maybe they can yeah. win. Yeah. So All right. Out. So, box box. With your so you had mentioned something earlier. You talked about <laughs> the DVR. Yeah, the DVR fifty. So it's called the DVR fifty. And what? Let's talk about that for uh, for a couple minutes. Sure. What is the DVR fifty, and what does it allow you to do? And the reason why I bring that up is because a the lot of people. says hello. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a it's a DVR unit sold by our Echo Master line and it allows you to monitor four cameras at once and it records them and it's also got lots of triggers and setups and it's got a whole menu thing like like I have it in my truck because again yeah I had to beta test they it. wanted me to test it right so right. Donnie's like here you got like a thousand cameras on your truck test yeah. this so I mean I put it in and it can do a lot of stuff. So if you just go to the Echo Master website and search DVR-50, mm -hmm. you'll see it. But like you can set up to record events. Like if you open a door, it's kind of like an alarm, if you will, built into a DVR. And you can set up to record for so many minutes or seconds after you open a door or turn the engine off. Or it's it's it does a lot. It does a lot. Um, it was originally started by our UK division 
auto leads and they yeah. sold mm -hmm. it on a lot of commercial vehicles and they actually install them in the UK police vehicles over there because really? you know Europe's yeah, all yeah, about yeah, the yeah, Big yeah. Brother CCDs. cameras and, yeah. mm -hmm. and all that so that's what it was started for and then they brought it over here to the States and it's starting to take off here as well. Yeah because we get a lot of people asking about it and I didn't know if that actually finally started shipping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last I checked, I think we got a couple hundred in stock. Okay. So I don't want one, but <laughs> they're pretty cool, man. They're pretty cool. That would involve putting cameras on my car. I don't want to do that. I mean, you know what, man? I wasn't a believer in it either until I did it, and now, like, it's, dude, blind spot cameras, front cam, bed cam, reverse cam. <laughs> Will it integrate with all your home cams? No. <laughs> That's a separate system. Do you work yeah, out of clear water? <laughs> yes, I do, actually. I'm based in the... Clearwater office right down the road here, about three miles. Yeah. So how many how many texts did you say there were here in Clearwater that answered the phones? That answer the phones. There are three guys that answer the phones, two guys that do email and chat. Um, I answer what we call level two tech support. So we had our sales team give out a special number yeah. to the best and the brightest and I lost mine. You know, that way I'm not, what do you mean? You got my cell phone. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, I was thinking about that this morning. I was like, you know, they went through such pains to give him that phone number that everyone can bother him on that number. And I matter. lost it because I was like, yeah, I'll write it down. I have a cell number. Why yeah, the hell exactly. do I need that? And I was like, oh, but that's kind of like a... So I, you yeah. know, I answer level two calls on the phones and I answer all the brand page Facebook. So our new system, we yes. use Zendesk. And it incorporates emails, telephone, Facebook, chat boxes, and a knowledge base all into one channel. Wow. And I can see it all and track it all in one thing. So when I did that, all of our marketing managers allowed me to plug the Facebook pages into it. So Echo Master, iSimple, Stinger, Phoenix Gold, and Pack. Aaron says, I take Dean Beck. I think we all do, Aaron. <laughs> Depends on which, which well, product you use. Well, it's always like, from. yeah. Or who he saw last. Yeah, yeah. The, well, the, <laughs> the phone calls always go like this. Really? Right. So, what's what? So, what's his name? Shadow Christian. Uh, yeah, Christian. Christian. Christian says thought some part of Ant moved to Cali. So we do have an office in California. That is where. That's the old Rosen Building. It is. It's the old Rosen Building, and it's where I have three guys out there that answers the phones. There's a warehouse out there. Yeah, like yeah, I said earlier, two of the guys out there take calls from the masses, and then the third guy is our, our GM specialist. So in grand total, I have nine people that work for me. Over in California, too, they also have a couple other divisions. Yeah, that's... so like the the main brand manager for, I'm sorry, the product. I get all these titles so Yeah. Wrong. So the product development, senior product development guy for PG and Stinger is based out of California. And then the new guy that handles the um, the guy that used to be in charge of Pack, Nathan's old boss, just took over a different department. Yes, He's out of Brett. Too. He is based out of California. He oversees what is our infotainment. Yes, that's mm -hmm. it. So he's like the the new Elevate Radio. Yes. Like he's doing that along with some other G14 projects that are coming down the line. G14. That, G14 classified. You ever seen oh. Rush Hour, man? I, I don't, yes, but I don't. He sucks at the movie quotes. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. I suck at the movie quotes. <laughs> so you I know, don't watch movies like you. So he's got a... Uh, <laughs> taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, yeah. And then there's, we also have a warehouse in Missouri. Okay. A warehouse in California, along with the, with the product management office. And there's two offices in California. Yeah. One in Ontario, one in Corona. Um, and then we also have an office in Borden, UK, that's Auto Leads. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's like the pack of Europe. Yeah. And, yes. um, yep. you know, we have that office there, and we have some engineers over in uh, China who help out with some things. And, you know, they, you know I'm saying they <laughs> actually. that call go the other day? Yeah. That wasn't a call, that was a Facebook post. I had a consumer in China who actually owned a FJ Cruiser. I thought oh, that was wow. quite weird. As packed as it is over there, I didn't know they were allowed to own vehicles that big. Wow. <laughs> but he had an RP 4.2 TY11, and it was funny because I was using Google Translate. Wait, he had it. Okay, TY11. Okay, yeah, okay. RP 4.2 okay. TY11 and a 2018 FJ Cruiser, and like I was getting these messages in Chinese and plugging them into Google Translate and translating them back, back and then typing it back and back into Chinese. Wait, whoa, 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 slow down. Yeah, that, okay. was, a, that was a five day exchange. <laughs> it really was. Oof.
Well, because wow. he was also 12 hours ahead of me, too. Yeah. So yeah, when yeah. I was messaging him at 3 in the afternoon, he it was 3 a.m. And yeah. then, you know, there's uh -huh. there's always a day delay between here and time. Apparently, there's also a big Jeep Wrangler group out there, too. Really? Yeah, Tony would just fit in perfect. <laughs> yeah. I know this only because... He's, he's a little bit bigger than those guys. That's yeah. Because... <laughs> Years ago, I was, or yeah, who knows, I was dealing with a guy that wanted, had a Wrangler that wanted to get the double ding kit. And at the time, there was only one company that made that. And mm -hmm. I was like, you need to get it because they were like, I don't want to. And I was like, hey, these company make it. Right. And um, so then we just got into dialogue and it was like, oh, yeah, there's this huge Jeep Wrangler group out there. Where you know, just another interesting things. fact about China, like the, the, the car of like stature there is a Buick. Like if you own like a Buick well, that's Lacrosse, what Buick still if you own a Buick Lacrosse in China, you're like balling. That's like a really? freaking BMW 7 Series here. Oh wow. Yeah, or Mercedes, whatever the high line is. I can't keep up with it. I name. know. Who knows? Yeah, no, right. It was like that. Was that the Kia the other day? Yeah. The the, the um, Kia Stinger. Stinger. Those things are pretty. Holy pretty awesome. yeah. Jesus, man. Uh, so that's I crazy. I was parking and I'm like, what kind of car is that? It looks like a Mercedes, man. So. Nope. Kids was really up their game in the last Whoa. decade, haven't they? But still well. Anyways. <laughs> well, hey. Yeah. yeah. Okay, promotion. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that brings us to an hour. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on today, Ernie. Well, thanks, it's Aaron. been a pleasure Glad learning. Here on camera. Uh, learning all about the ins and outs of PAC and it puts a name, if you guys ever call tech support, you won't get him, but you'll get one of his <laughs> disciple. Yep. There are it's another there's, Ernie. There's, there's another Ernie that yep. works. In, yeah, he's, yeah. He's Ernie Ruiz, so. yeah, yeah, you can totally tell them apart. They sound nothing alike. <laughs> yeah. I'm from Georgia. He's hey. from South California. Yeah. Hey, bro, what's going on, man? No. Oh, <laughs> totally wrong, man. Yeah. <laughs> but with a Hispanic accent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I go, hey, you're a different Ernie. Yeah. The yeah, sales yeah. guys come to me all the time. Hey, my guy, I just talked to you. I'm like, no, he didn't no, talk no, to me. No, I didn't. <laughs> I go, y'all? No. Okay. Good night, Johnny. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much as always for watching. You know where to find the cool stuff. DNF tool drawers. We can find all the cool tools that we use to do the show. Patreon, support the show, as well as Teespring slash store slash five star will get you cool five star t shirts. Mm -hmm. And join us again on Saturday where we're going to do the YouTube live show at six o'clock. You guys have a wonderful week as always. We will see you later next time. Thanks for joining us today on this special Tuesday edition. It's those five kids, man. Well, five Georgia. kids. Griffin. Griffin, Griffin, Georgia. Griffin, Georgia. Hey. Oh, and for all, all of you that are Pioneer fans, there was an update published today for the 44. The 84 and the 6400, yep. so make sure you download and do that. If there's anything cool to report on it, we will let you know. I updated the 44 in my car, so it ought to be interesting. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye.